welcome to Are We There Yet? The podcast looking at the innovations emerging from the workshops, labs and secret test tracks of Hyundai. Across this series, we've heard about technology which is changing our world. Electric racing, flying vehicles and how sustainable materials are transforming car design. Yeah, what's coming for sure is uh, more and more advanced and sustainable materials. Sustainability is the most important thing uh, we are working on. So that's about exploring our environment to see what's next. But this edition is a bit different. It's going to take us not just across the surface of our planet, but into the oceans. We'll be hearing about a partnership which is helping clean up our seas and we'll be asking how companies like Hyundai can boost the global drive to improve the marine environment. I'm Susie Perry and this podcast comes to you from Hyundai Motor. I'm joined by two people who have come together to try and improve our relationship with the oceans. Veronica Mikos, Director of Healthy Seas, and Florian Bungener, Head of PR and Communications at Hyundai Motor Europe. It's really great to have both of you. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Great to see you and hear you, Susie. Nice to meet you. Hi, Veronica. I'm so excited about talking about this subject, Veronica. It's lovely that you've joined us. Thank you. And my connection to the sea, I can honestly say that some of my most relaxed and wondrous moments that I've experienced come from being away from the land and in the sea. I do live near to the sea. And just that simple feeling, actually, of floating on the surface with my head in the water submerged, lying back, is a beautiful thing. But the soundscape of life, it completely changes and all the strains of everyday life just melts away. And when I learned to scuba dive, I suddenly realised, and this is going to sound a little bit stupid, but there's another world on our planet to experience and it offers a brand new perspective, an immersive, magical, unique experience that you can't create on land. It's like um, a subterranean natural history show playing out live right in front of you and you're the director. And this is something that we should be saving and nurturing and that's not really what's happening. And that is what we're going to talk about in this podcast. So, you know, Veronica, I'd, I'd love to ask you, what, what's your personal connection to the sea? How do you feel about it? It's very emotional to have connection uh, to the seas. I grew up at Lakeside and I spent all my free time in water. Um, now I live close by to the sea. I have beach walks every day. And whether being on a beach or on a boat or underwater, it's always the same experience I'm having that I forget the past and the future. I'm not busy with anything else in my head other than focusing on the present moment. And I think that's something we tend to lose in our everyday life. But personally, for me, the sea symbolizes power, freedom, eternity. And working for clean and healthy seas is really a privilege. So I can I can say my job is also my passion. Yeah, and, and Florian, if I can just bring you in as well, just from a personal point of view, what's your connection with the sea? Um, <laughs> to be honest, I was always quite afraid of going into the sea because I didn't never see what what was underneath it until I I really went um, when I lived in the US. I went surfing, and there you have a quite different connection. Uh, and, and this was really this, this moment where you, where you thought, okay, well, as you said, there's a way more underneath you than you might be seeing, but also there already, yeah, you were experiencing pollution in the sea uh, when, when uh, things were dangling with your, with your leash at the surfboard, et cetera. And it was, at this stage, it was more annoying that, than, than concerning for me. Um, but the more you are in contact, the more, the more you see uh, this is something we might need to take care of. Mm. Yeah, there you saw really in a very small scale already what, what might be a problem. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? We sort of move forward quite quickly to, to the problem. But um, I remember when I was a child swimming in the sea in, in Wales, in North Wales, where we always do go on holiday. And there was a part of the sea that my parents wouldn't let us swim in because there was storage going into the sea. And it affected me as a child for years because I thought that I couldn't swim in the sea. And I, I just kept thinking quite, I've got quite a vivid imagination. And it was, 
it just an awful thought. And I, I couldn't understand why that bad stuff was going in the sea and where was it going? And was it just sitting there? You know, and I was very young and it was years before I started to swim again properly in the sea because of that. So when I learned to dive, I obviously learned about the pro- some of the problems that were going on in the sea 20 years ago and the erosion and the pollution. But it wasn't really until I watched the Blue Planet in 2017 that I got the the huge enormity of the problem that we were in. And, you know, now it's so heartbreaking to discover that 100% of baby turtles have got plastic inside them. And, you know, such an amount, a large amount of fish that we're eating has got plastic inside it. it, it it's, it's really a massive, massive problem that we should be talking about so much more. And, um, and, it's, and it's interesting to see what's being done. So, Veronica, can I ask you, when did you first sit up and, and take notice of, of the problem that we've got now? Even if I just think of 10 years ago, walking uh, on the coastline 10 years ago, picking up beautiful shells. Nowadays, I pick up mostly plastic. It's, it's incredible how much it got worse, the situation of plastic pollution. According to a, a recent reports by uh, 2050, uh, there will be more plastic and seas in our oceans than fish. That's really heavy. To even think about and um, to be honest also if we go back now to dive sites where we have been five years ago I already see myself like physically having less fish colors marine life around than just five years ago so I can't even imagine 2050 and uh, the beaches are more visible to most of the people and uh, underwater is a hidden mysterious world so what we are trying with a group of divers is to showcase the problem what we encountered from uh, an area which is hidden to most people it's actually very interesting how healthy seas has started back then beginning of 2013 was a group of volunteer divers already running sea cleanups in the Netherlands, uh, simply cleaning up shipwrecks in their free time because they used to dive for fun at those wrecks and they have seen the drama happening down there, animals being entangled, uh, suffering, dying in those ghost nets which got stuck on the shipwrecks. They didn't know what to do with the nets, so just uh, put them in a bin in the harbour. The municipality took it uh, to landfill or incinerator. Ghost nets. Can you just tell us exactly what they are and the problems that they cause? Uh, Fishing nets which are uh, discarded, lost or abandoned are sometimes called ghost nets because they keep catching and killing marine life without human involvement. So that's where the word ghost is coming from. And uh, millions of marine animals, including dolphins, uh, seals, turtles, get entangled in these nets. So they suffer and eventually die. This is... A problem for marine life, but also for economy. Ghost nets cause a lot of problems to local communities and fishermen as well. Uh, It places significant cost on them because of the lost fishing time and also the damage to active nets. Uh, We were just a group of enthusiastic people who decided to do something about this problem. And then at a lucky moment in time, we met uh, two sustainable uh, businesses, Tele and Yarn Manufacturer, who developed a technology to regenerate uh, fishing nets into brand new nylon yarn. And a Dutch company, which is a sustainable sock producer company. And together with the volunteer organization of the divers Ghost Diving, the storyline of Healthy Seas, a journey from waste to where was born. And also agreed to create a platform or a movement which many other sustainable businesses, uh, NGOs, uh, stakeholders can actually join. So that's how our story all started. That's really fascinating. What, what kind of global scale problem are we talking about here? On um, a yearly basis, uh, 640,000 tons of uh, fishing nets enter in our seas and oceans globally. And what is also very shocking is that uh, fishing nets can be lost in one corner of the planet and end up in another because of oceanic currents. Uh, So we are really talking about a global problem which requires urgent action. And since 2013, do you feel as though the fishing industry has changed at all? 
it's going into the right direction. We work also very hard uh, behind the scenes uh, on prevention with the fishing industry, engaging fishermen and fish farmers in the responsible handling of waste at the end of life. Uh, we provide them collection points in the harbors. Also, policymakers uh, in all countries uh, make, um, let's say, real improvements. With, uh, with those changes in the fishing industry and the awareness of what's going on, have you seen, um, have you seen the public awareness of, of the problem change and how has that manifested itself? Do, do you feel as though the the movement now is growing um, in, in a very good way to try and tackle this problem? Yes, definitely. Back then, uh, beginning of 2013, if you Googled uh, ghost nets or something similar, you hardly got a few hits. And nowadays it's such a hot topic and we are very happy about it that um, uh, responsible companies get engaged. Uh, also policymakers, it's high on the agenda of, uh, of uh, international political talks as well. We know that we cannot save the world alone. So we are a group of enthusiastic divers and other surface volunteers. We like and hope to inspire others to follow. And luckily, we have seen since we started all around uh, the planet, many initiatives, similar projects starting up. It's really going in the right direction. Healthy Seas have partnered with Hyundai, which is um, the great reason that you're talking with us today on this platform, where I'd like to bring in Florian. Can you um, explain to us a little about the partnership, please? Yes, uh, Susie, sure. Um, we were looking into our renewal of the CSV strategy. Uh, CSV means creating shared value as a company. So here we're talking about supporting the society through, for example, supporting NGOs like Healthy Seas to, well, create a better society, but mainly support on a local or even global basis. That's pretty much our direction in this CSV approach. So we said, let's look at not only producing zero emission vehicles, zero emission mobility, but also look at what the current situation in this field of environmental problems. And here quickly came to uh, marine pollution. Uh, and then we found uh, with um, Healthy Seas, a potential partner where we said, here we can clearly make an impact, but we're not greenwashing ourselves. And here we have to give um, big credit to Healthy Seas of saying, okay, we're not giving you the chance to greenwash yourself. You mentioned the term greenwashing. <laughs> yes. But essentially, I suppose that's like not just trying to look good and environmentally friendly, but actually doing something about it. Correct. It, 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 it needs to be not only sustainable when it comes to environmental friendly, but it needs to be a sustainable case. We need to be involved. We need to join this project as an active partner and have an active impact, but really have our community have our over 9,000 employees in Europe engage with this project and use our resources um, to support, um, in this case, cleaning of the oceans. So it's not just giving us money and that's it, thank you. But we would wanted to find something where we can engage with all the markets that we are serving uh, as Unimoto Europe, which are over 40 but also where we can create additional engagement for healthy seas as well, because that's important for us really to say we have a strong network. Yes, sure, we are supporting also on a monetary basis, but a very important part is to engage with this network, to get this network engaged in the different countries and to support healthy seas on all the different levels. That'd be from communication up to beach cleanups uh, on, a, on a local basis. Uh, under this umbrella of, of, of cleaning the oceans. So that was very important for us. And especially also this part of saying we need to solve environmental and economic problems here uh, was very important for us as well. Because um, here we find the right program that we can support and as a next step, really promote a way of circular economy. Um, you've talked with Tayo and with our designers about it, how to use recycled plastic in cars. So this is then the next step for us together with Healthy Seas. We're using this material to really find a clear circular economy or economic solution within this whole case. And that was very important for us. And here we got the feedback from our different um, uh, subsidiaries, markets and colleagues where they said this is actually 
what they were looking for as well. So from headquarter down to the dealer, to the customer, everybody can su theoretically support this deed. Mm. Okay, so that's great. That's really interesting to hear from the side of Hyundai. Veronica, from your side, from Healthy Seas, what does this collaboration bring to your organization? This uh, cooperation with Hyundai opens up a new horizon for us. Hyundai is also the first car manufacturer which joined the Health Disease movement. We've been working so far with 90 plus companies, business partners, supporters in our network, mostly from the fashion industry, also carpet manufacturers, sportwear, swimwear. So all kinds of manufacturers who are using the either the regenerated nylon yarn or the raw fishing nets uh, directly. And um, this cooperation with Hyundai is going to help us enormously to um, intensify our activities and also our impact. With the help of Hyundai, we will be able to implement uh, multiple cleanups and education programs in about six, seven countries all year round. And I'm talking about really big projects here. And we start in a couple of days, 8th of June, World Oceans Day in Greece with our first event. So we are uh, very excited about it. And is this a Europe-wide commitment, Veronica, Florian? It is a European initiative. Yes, we have, a, we have local cleanups in different countries, Germany, Italy, France, UK, Spain, and also the Netherlands, uh, and now um, Greece. So um, we are talking to all of our markets directly to be engaged, and some markets are quickly picking up. But it is a European umbrella, and that's very important for us to, with our impact that we can have. And how does it work in terms of commitment? So it's a 12-month commitment currently. Does that have an opportunity to, to extend if, if you feel it's mutually benefit? So we are, we are looking at, at long-run relationships, whatever we do, especially to have an impact, yes. We are looking to have a sustainable case here. We have, have to have a project that is having a long-lasting impact, and that's very important for us. And Veronica, you mentioned uh, the cleanup operation starting in Greece. Are there any other projects that you would like to mention, um, maybe education projects or anything else that, that comes along with this? Yes, so basically um, helping us to implement uh, big projects all year round is one of the direct benefits of this cooperation. A series of cleanups, education programs in uh, UK, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Greece and France, Spain as well. Like Florian mentioned, in these countries we're going to operate all year round. We are currently putting together the calendar. I would not like to highlight one or the other, but uh, you will hear from us. We are going to be busy in all these countries. We also have a long-term vision in this cooperation and uh, the hope which uh, will be that... Um, our activities will become more environmentally friendly. We already do something good for the environment, recovering all those nets. And thanks to our partners who regenerated into new yarn and new products, this already has measurable impact. But beyond that, our mobility, the way we go, the way we travel, uh, the way the trucks are carrying the materials, uh, possibly a more uh, environmentally friendly boat in the future. So there are a lot of, let's say, potentials or possibilities for long-term cooperation if uh, both parties are positive. It's actually nice to have this call now, uh, Susie, because we, we, here we're adding a lot of things that you have talked about with other parts of the company as well. We are designed with the sustainable material. We have trucks now where we are also in contact with Mark and team to see how can we use our fuel cell trucks to support healthy seas here by transporting the nets throughout Europe into the manufacturing of the econylon and all these different cases that we're looking into now that are really flowing into, into this cooperation as well. Yeah, it, I was thinking it's a domino effect, isn't it really? Such a big operation that you've, you're going to start in Greece that you've got going across Europe. It's not just about clearing those nets and then and then what you do with those nets, but how everybody gets everywhere and, and the logistics. So, you know, the, the use of eco vehicles and as you say, Florian, the hydrogen trucks, it's, it all starts to become a big community and you can see how it all evolves and how from just being a car manufacturer at one point, you know, it, the landscape has completely changed, hasn't it? No, definitely. It's, um, I mean, the more we 
dove into this project, the more we saw the opportunities. With every talk we have, I mean, the ideas get crazier, but it's also um, the opportunities get more for us um, jointly. Yeah, so my, ne my next question really was, how, how does it feed back to Hyundai, even in terms of employees? How, how, do, how does the effect radiate throughout Hyundai with something like a collaboration with Healthy Seas? The projects are about to kick off, but uh, so far we had a very, very positive feedback from our employees as well, really saying, let's get started, which was very uh, positive. And you don't always get that, especially in the in this field of NGOs work, it's sometimes a bit abstract or people just say, okay, mm, yeah, nice. But again, again, coming back to the screenwashing. Um, so I think here we uh, have a good chance of people really being in the topic a bit more but also seeing we can have an impact and we can have an impact that has an impact on our work at Hyundai itself as well. It's not just we are supporting somebody else, but we are also supporting our company. We are supporting our communities. And I think that's important to establish this 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 full circular economy jointly for our cars as well. And it's been a good timing with our Ionic 5 to come up to say, yes, we have a, a fully recyclable interior or recycled interior And next steps are being taken with cars to come. And here people really see this fits now and also brings all the different business cases that we have in the Hyundai community and network together. And I suppose as an individual, there are things that you can do when you see something that you're inspired by. Um, obviously, there's, there's donating and choosing to buy sustainable products, but also maybe even signing up for volunteering you know, opportunities uh, in terms of cleaning up beaches or if you're a diver. You, you can actually physically get involved in, in this kind of operation. Veronica, you were smiling at a couple of things that Florian uh, was saying there. Your experience of engagement, I suppose, how, how have you found that from, from people that know about Healthy Seas? Exactly. Uh, the words Florian mentioned are totally correct. And especially, I love the word abstract. Uh, nature conservation sometimes can be very abstract. And uh, there are many organizations doing wonderful work in conferences, meeting rooms. Um, in my opinion, what makes Health Seas different is that we have tangible activities and tangible results. So we are uh, totally open. We have uh, measurable uh, success uh, or collection points in the harbor are open or events are open. So anyone can come and basically see us working in the field. And that's also the first time in my life that I can actually tell my uh, friends or family what I'm working on because I dedicated all my career. I always worked for nature conservation at different level. But since I'm, I'm working for Healthy Seas, that's the first time that actually uh, people around me understand what I'm doing. <laughs> So I, I can imagine this is also appealing for um, industry and, and business partners who can put this through in their communications in a more clear way. And indeed, we had a couple of calls uh, with uh, Hyundai, the different markets uh, separately as well. And I see the level of interest and enthusiasm uh, at, at people, not only at an organizational level, but also individuals. So obviously, if they want to come as private persons in their free time or with their family to join our events, the beach cleanups, uh, that's, uh, that's all open for them. On a broader question then, what happens to the plastic material that you collect on your, on your cleanups from the sea, where you physically go, get rid of it? Where does it go? So basically we have collection points in different harbors, then it goes to uh, a factory which is doing the cleaning, the sorting, and then the nylon six type of fishing nets uh, enter uh, aquafill facilities together with other nylon waste. They are upcycled into Econil yarn and those parts which nothing can be done with, that's waste to energy. So uh, that's also taken care of. But really, everyone can do something. And uh, not only about fishing nets, so of course, not everyone is coming from a fishing family, but uh, more than 80% of the plastic waste in the seas and oceans is coming from land. If there is a plastic bag or something, a straw, which people use and, and drop, in the street and not in the bin, ends up in the reverse, the streams, the reverse, the reverse end up in the seas and the oceans. So actually, 
really everyone, even even living in Frankfurt, far from the sea, can have an impact on what they eat, uh, the shopping they do, how they how they live their everyday life. So I really encourage everyone to think about their own individual individual contribution to a better planet. And uh, we do orbit as well with Healthy Seas and Hyundai to make sure that this uh, awareness. Uh, raising uh, impact will be bigger by the end of the year and we get the message through even to new stakeholders and target groups than we have done so far. So we can do our bit individually by choosing even what we go to buy, I suppose, in a shop, not choosing something that's wrapped in plastic, trying to buy fresh and not packaged items and then being extremely careful how we deal with any packaging that we do have and make sure it goes into the right recycling bins, et cetera, et cetera. Who else needs to help here? Because it's all very well as trying to do something on an individual scale. But, you know, there are people, obviously, that make decisions for us in terms of governments. You know, how much more help do we need from them? We have seen a huge improvement here as well. We've been in a dialogue with the European Union uh, recently about the single-use plastics. So we are really hopeful and positive. Uh, there's been a, a great change. And personally, what's uh, fascinating me the most are the school programs with children. When uh, they go home and at the end of the day, we receive messages uh, from the parents uh, saying that at the dinner table, they were discussing single-use plastic items, uh, what to do in order to save turtles and dolphins. So the children are really our ambassadors and often they educate their parents. So I think... uh, Here we are talking about different levels of responsibilities. We as adults, what we can do in our life, what policymakers, politicians can do. But also we invest a lot of effort in the children. And um, it's a a mix of responsibilities, basically. Yeah, of course. And taking responsibility being the key. Um, Can you just tell us how we can find out more about your NGO? On our website and social media channels, healthdisease.org. Please drop us a message there. Uh, there are various ways to get involved as an individual, as organizations, become a partner, um, become a volunteer. Uh, so there you can see more details. I think the more we go into the into the cooperation, the more hopefully you, you will read and uh, see about Healthy Seas especially. Um, we'll see that we, um, that we give Healthy Seas the platforms that they need to, to find them. So that's, that's our big target here as well. It's an incredible project that you have ahead of you. How excited are you, Florian, um, from from Hyundai's perspective on and in, in getting involved and in getting some results here? I'm very excited. When we when we started it, we had to really fight for it internally. But the more we talked about it, the quicker the walls just dropped. The interest on the global side is very high as well, uh, and this is taken now as a benchmark project. That's where we are really excited um, to to roll out the first programs together and that that's really really what we're looking forward to see this impactful partnership and veronica from your side what is your expectation from this partnership we also got positive feedback from all levels uh, from our existing partners as well like i said at the beginning uh, uh, thanks to this cooperation with hyundai we will be able to implement some uh, real big impactful projects which we were uh, not able to do so far also expand our our, our geographical scope, capacity, and uh, this way basically uh, having bigger impact, positive impact on uh, clean and healthy seas. And also on the long term uh, to see how at different levels this cooperation can uh, greener or uh, or mobility activities. Yeah, sure. It's a very inspiring story, having the idea and getting out there, Veronica, and doing something about it and seeing how it's grown and how other companies uh, see the problem and are helping you effectively um, try, to, try to resolve the problem. And in this podcast, we we ask, are, you, are we there yet? Um, obviously, we're not completely there yet at all. But in terms of healthy seas, how confident do you feel about the future and and what it can achieve? Healthy seas has the potential to be expanded and, and replicated more widely. Our figures are growing exponentially. So uh, we have great hopes and, and, and great things on the horizon. But what's also important is we don't want to say that we can solve alone the problem of ghost nets globally. But uh, by inspiring others to follow and replicate, we, we think we can make an impact there as well. 
And Florian, from the point of view of, of Hyundai, where do you feel you are in terms of moving forward with ecologically friendly projects like Healthy Seas? The strong focus on ecological projects is the beginning for us. We see a big impact that we, we can leave. Cars like the Ironic lineup have a big potential for us to also um, support NGOs on a business case level to include things like fishing nets or the, the plastic, ocean plastic into this business case. And, and that's very important for us to make the beginning for an industry itself, not only for us, but really to see how can you make also NGOs profitable with, with this focus on retrieving plastic, upcycling it and using it again. Plus, for us, it's really important to use our networks to promote the, the cause of healthy seas even more. It sounds like it could be the start of a game changer. I'm really excited to hear about the project goes. Veronica, personally, would quite like to get involved. So I'm going to go and have a look at the website and see um, see what can happen and uh, and the problems out there. So thank you so much, Florian and Veronica, for your time today and for telling us about this project and this collaboration. Um, really fascinating. Have a great day and uh, good luck when it starts in Greece. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Suzy. Thanks, Veronica. See you soon. See <laughs> Bye. you. Bye-bye. If you're excited by these innovations and the partnerships Hyundai are building, you can find out more at Hyundai.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Are We There Yet podcast from your usual podcast providers. It means, of course, that you'll never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.